Let's build graphical user interface apps with Tkinter and Python. Hey, my name is John Elder, and I'm the founder of Tkinter.com. In this playlist, I'm going to teach you how to build GUI apps like this quickly and easily using Tkinter. This playlist is aimed at the absolute beginner, so if you've never looked at Tkinter before, this is for you. Tkinter is a GUI framework that comes with Python, so there's nothing to install or purchase. In fact, you can create apps using Tkinter with just a few lines of code, and I'll show you how starting in this video. In Tkinter, everything is a widget. So if you want to add a button, that's a button widget. If you want to add text, that's a label widget. If you want to add a box to type stuff in, that's an entry widget. So to learn Tkinter, you basically just need to learn how to use all those widgets. And that's what you'll learn in this playlist. In addition to founding Tkinter.com, I also wrote the Tkinter widget quick reference guidebook that lists all the widgets and their attributes. Later in this video, I'll show you how to download a totally free copy of it. So let's dive right in and start learning Tkinter. In this video, we'll build this very basic app that has some text and a button. And when we click the button, the text changes. This basic app will give us the foundation to start building out more sophisticated apps later in the playlist. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Intro to Tkinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a blank file here. I'm calling it hello.py. And the first thing to know is Tkinter files are Python files, so they end in .py. So I'm going to assume you've already got Python installed on your computer. If not, head over to python.org, download the latest version. Make sure you click the little box that says Add Python to Path, and you'll be good to go. To create a Tkinter program, we start out by importing Tkinter. So we go from Tkinter. We want to import everything, and star means everything. So now once we've imported this, we can just use it. So the basic framework to start a Tkinter app is to create a tkinter instance. And we do that by creating a variable. Usually we call it root or something like that, but it really doesn't matter what you call it. And this is just gonna be a tk instance. And that's it. We've now instantiated tkinter and we're ready to go. The only other thing we always need in our apps is a main loop. So we call root dot main loop. And you'll notice this root is the same root. It's a tkinter instance. And our main loop is just a loop. It just keeps kind of spinning in the background. And that's what allows the program to notice when you do things. So if you move your cursor, it's looping around and it notices the cursor. Every you know instance it loops, it notices the cursor moves. If you click a button, you know that loop is spinning around, noticing things as you click it and things like that. So just all apps have a main loop. So you could pretty much set this and forget it. And I always kind of put it down at the bottom because this is always going to be the last line in your code. You're not ever going to have anything else underneath here. We just want this main loop to be the last thing. So now we can come up here and sort of define how we want our app to look and feel. So first, let's give it a title. And by title, look up here in Sublime Text up in my cursor, this very top bar thing, that's the title bar of any app. And for Tkinter, we can say what's up here, right? So we do that by calling root dot title. Now inside of here, let's just say hello world. Right. So that's our title. We can also give it a little icon. You notice there's this little sublime icon. We can give it a root dot icon bitmap. And I want this image to be in our images directory slash. Now I have a little icon called tkinter.ico. So that's what I'm going to be using. And now you'll notice this is in images because this file here, this tkinter.ico, needs to be saved in the same directory where you're saving this file here, our hello.py file. If it's in some other directory, we need to be explicit. We need to be like C slash, you know, whatever, slash images, slash whatever. But since this is all in the same directory, we can just use a relative path and call images slash tkinter because I have a directory called images. In fact, we could pull up a little file explorer here. And you can see here's my tkinter.com folder. That's where I'm saving this hello.py file. And inside of here, we have this images directory. And inside of here, we have this tkinter icon. And it's just this little icon that I use for things. So, okay. Now that's an ICO file. That's a specific type of file. It's an icon file and that's Windows specific. If you're on Mac or Linux, you can't use an icon file. You'll have to Google the icon file type for Mac or Linux. I can't remember what it is offhand, but you can Google that and just replace that type of image. So, okay, that's cool. The last thing we need here is root.geometry. And with this, we pass in the size of our app. So let's make this 500 by 350. And those are pixels. So it's going to be 500 wide by 350 height. Let's go ahead and save this and just run it and see what we have here. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm using the git bash terminal. I'm in my c slash tkinter.com directory. 
And to run this, we just call Python and then the name of the file. So hello.py. And when we do, boom, this box pops up. It is 500 by 300. It has a title that says hello world. It's got a little icon in there. And all right, we've got our first tkinter app and it was just that easy. So, I mean, there's nothing going on in this app, but man, look at this. This is one, two, three, four, five, six lines of code. And we have a GUI app. Like that's just incredible. And that's the power of tkinter. That's why we love tkinter. Some people may argue that tkinter is not that sophisticated. It doesn't look all that modern, but man, for six lines of code, just getting started, that's incredible. And also we can make it look more modern. There are different libraries we can use. We'll talk about later in the playlist, how to make it more modern looking. It's very easy to do that. So, okay, we've got our app here. So now what do we want to do? Well, let's create a label. And to do that, like I said earlier, everything in tkinter is a widget. So if we want text, it's a label widget. If we want a button, it's a button widget. And I mentioned, I have this book, the tkinter widget quick reference guide book. Like I said, you can get a totally free copy of this. And all this is, is it lists all of the widgets that tkinter has and all of their attributes. And every widget has different attributes. And we'll see some of those attributes in just a second. But the attributes allow you to do things with the widget, right? So if you want to change the font size, that's the font attribute. If you want to change the color, that's a color attribute. And this book, all it does is list all those attributes. So it's very handy to have. I like to keep this thing just on my desk or in the PDF file. So if I'm working with a widget and I'm like, oh, wait, how do I change the background color of that widget? I just pull it up in the book. Boom, there it is. And like I said, you can get a totally free PDF copy of this book today. All I ask is you just hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. That helps us a lot. And then once you've done that, you can just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address. And I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. That's my website where I teach tkinter in depth and get all my courses, all my future courses for one low price. If you use coupon code YouTube, you can get 30% off membership if you're interested. So download the book, check out the website, and let's continue on creating our app. So to create a widget, any widget, you just create a variable name. And I'm going to call this my underscore label. You can call these things anything you want, but I like to name them what they are. So I'm calling this my label. If our app was more sophisticated and, you know, we had a lot of labels, I might name this name label or a uh, first name label. And then if I had another one called last name, I would name it last name label and things like that. Just be descriptive, right? So I'm going to call this my label. And this is just going to be a label, right? And this is a label widget. Now inside of these parentheses, this is where we add all of the attributes that we want. So what do we want? Well, first you always have to put where this thing is going and it's going in our root app. And you might say, well, where else could it go? Well, we could have other windows that pop up. In that case, you would, you know, put other windows. So if you had, you know, another window called root two, you would call it root two, but we just have one window for now, but root always goes first. And then you just start with your attributes. So we want the text to equal hello world. I also want to change the font so I can make this bigger or smaller and we can decide which type of font we want to use. So our computers all have lots of system fonts. We can use all of those just by naming them. Like I want to use Helvetica. You just type in Helvetica. And if I want it to be size 24 font size, you just pop in 24. So that's it. Now there are lots of other attributes that go with the label widget. Like I said, grab a totally free PDF copy of this book. They're all listed alphabetically. So I pulled up, I kid you not, I just pulled up label widget page, right? So different attributes, we have active background color, active foreground color, anchor background, border width, bitmap, cursor, disable foreground, font foreground, uh, height, Highlight background, highlight color, highlight thickness, image, justify, pad X, pad Y, relief, state, take focus, text, text variable, underline, width, and wrap length. So it's a lot of different things in this. You can play around with these. And we'll get into these in more detail later on as we build out different apps. You'll see some of these attributes. But for now, if you need something, it's listed in that book. Just use it in the same way we did here, right? Text is an attribute. Text equals quotation marks. Font equals the thing. So it's spelled out in the book. So, all right, that looks good. Now we've got our label defined. Now we need to put it on the screen. And there's basically three ways to put a widget on the screen. We can pack, we can grid, and we can place. Now each of these are good for different things. Pack just puts a widget at the top of the screen. 
And then the, when you pack the next one, it just packs it right underneath. And then the next one right underneath. And the right and the next one right underneath. It just starts at the top and just packs them in as you define them. And that's good. That works great in a lot of circumstances if your app is not very sophisticated. If we've just got a few things, I'm almost always going to just pack them. Grid, on the other hand, creates a grid system. So you have rows and columns, and it splits your entire app into rows and columns. So you can define, I want this in row three, column four, and it'll move it down and over. I want this one in row zero, column one. So it'll put it right up here. So we'll get into pack and grid later on. Uh, but these are the main two that we're going to use. Place is a little bit different. It specifies a coordinate. So if I wanted over 200 and down 300, I would use place. But that gets a little tricky as you're resizing apps and things. So place I don't often use uh, just for very specific things that we'll get into much later on in this playlist. Usually I'm going to use pack or grid. Now the thing about these are once you pick one, you have to kind of use it and nothing but it for the rest of your app. So you can't both pack and grid, except you kind of can. And I'll teach you how to do that a few videos from now when we look at frames. What you can do is pack a frame and then inside of the frame, you can grid. So that's one way to sort of get around that. Lots of talk here. We're going to get into this as we move on in this playlist, just giving you these sort of topics for future uh, reference here. But for now, I'm just going to pack this guy. So to pack a thing, we just call my underscore label dot pack, right? So this will just put this on the screen. Now, if you wanted to grid it, it would be dot grid, right? If you wanted to place it, it would be dot place, right? We just want to pack it. Now, this will put it right at the top of the screen. If we want to move it around or to the left or right a little bit, we can by calling a pad Y. And pad Y gives padding to the Y coordinates above it and below it, right? So to do that, this will give 20 pixels of padding above and below this label, right? So there we go. So, all right, let's go ahead and save this and just see what this is. So let's head back over here and run this guy. And boom, we get a label. It says, hello world. And you'll notice there's space above it. That's that pad Y, right? If we took that off, right, save this and ran it again, you'll notice, boom, it's right up at the top, right? So maybe you want that, maybe you don't. I happen to want a little bit of padding. I think it looks better. So I'm going to put that back in and there we go. So, okay, that's a label. Now let's create a button because, hey, we need a button, right? So I'm going to call this my underscore button. And this is going to be a button widget. And you'll notice it looks very similar, right? We created a variable just like we did there. And then instead of a label, it's a button widget. Same parentheses, same deal. On the inside of here, we have our attributes. Again, we always put in root because that's where we want the button to be. And then we just add our attributes. So I want the text to say, uh, click me, right? <laughs> Whatever. And same deal. We can set the font size if we want. So let's do that. Let's say uh, Helvetica and size 24. And that's it. That's all we want right now. So again, let's my underscore button dot pack this guy. And again, I want to give a pad Y of 20 to give it some space. So, all right, let's save this and run it. Oh, we've got this big button. We click it, nothing actually happens, but hey, that's pretty cool. Now this is a little bigger size than I would want probably. So we could ratchet this down to like, I don't know, 16 or something. Change the font size. Save this guy and run it. And boom, now it's a little bit smaller. Now we can change the colors of these buttons. We can change the relief. You can see it's sort of raised up. We can change that. We can get into all of this stuff and we'll get into all of these things in later videos. In this intro video, I just want to sort of whet your appetite and show you some quick things to get you going. Like I said, my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guidebook has all those attributes listed. So you can look through there and play around with each of those. Uh, but for now, we're just going to keep it real simple. Now, very quickly before we move on, I keep calling it Kinter or T Kinter. Some people call it Kinter. The T is silent. A lot of people call it T Kinter. I tend to call it Kinter just because I say it a lot and I T Kinter, T Kinter, it, you know, it kind of rolls off the tongue not so great. I just call it Kinter, right? So if I call it Kinter, I mean T Kinter. So just sort of keep that in mind. All right, back to the code. How do we make this button actually do something? Well, to make a button do something, we have to give it a command. So to do that, that's just another attribute. So we put a comma and command equal. And now let's run a little function. And I'm going to call this uh, change. 
we haven't created this function yet. But we'll do that in just a second. One other thing you'll notice, all of these attributes are separated by commas. I should probably have picked up on that, but if you didn't, they're all separated by commas. So, okay, we've got this command of change. Now we can just come up here and create a little function. So let's define change. And this is just a Python function. This has nothing to do with tkinter and we can do anything we want in here. So what do we want to do? Well, let's change the label text, right? So right now the text is hello world. Now, how do we change a label later on after we've already defined it? We've already defined it to say hello world. Well, we could just call the widget. That's my underscore label. And then we can dot config. Now inside of here, we can change any of these attributes. So let's say we want to set the text equal to goodbye world. Right? And let's give this some exclamation points. <laughs> there we go. So now if we save this, head back over here, run this guy again. It says hello world. When it clicks me, boom, it says goodbye world. Pretty cool. So now if we wanted to get a little tricky with this, we could toggle this back and forth. So let's come up here and create global switch variable. So let's go global switch and let's set our switch equal to true to begin with. Now inside of our change function here, let's also call global switch and let's go if switch equals true. We want to change our text to goodbye world and then change our switch to false. Else, let's grab this whole thing, paste it again and have it say hello world and then set it back to true. So basically, so just a little bit of logic to toggle back and forth as we click the button. So let's go ahead and save this, head back over to our terminal, run this guy again. And now we have hello world, goodbye world, hello world, goodbye world. Every time we click it, it switches back and forth. Silly app. <laughs> Obviously, we don't need an app to do this, but a simple app to show you how things work and to sort of whet your appetite for tkinter. So very cool. So this is tkinter. Like I said, all you have to do to learn tkinter is basically learn all the widgets. And there's, I don't know, 20 or 30 widgets. It's not that complicated. Using them is very simple, just as simple as you see right here. You just want the text to say hello world. Boom, it's hello world. You want the font to be a certain size. There it is. You want to give a button a command. There it is. Very simple, straightforward. And then you can leverage the entire power of Python. So all of this stuff is basically just Python, right? This is just an if statement. This is just a Boolean variable, right? The only kind of weird thing is we had to make this global. We can get around that. For those of you who hate using global variables, and we'll get into that in coming videos, but just quick and dirty to show you how this works. That's all there is to it. So I hope you're excited to learn tkinter. It's a lot of fun, very easy to use, and you can create some really powerful stuff. So let's jump into the next video that should pop up right here and learn about the entry widget.